Okay, guys, this is topic 15, wave motion. So this is gonna be part one. I'm gonna do this in two parts because uh, the videos are very long and uh, so people have requested to maybe shorten it on to maybe 20, 30 minute segments. So that's what we're gonna to do today, all right? So this is basically just a basic theory of waves. Then we move on into uh, frequency length and then finally wave nature of light, okay? All right, so wave motion. The first thing is what is a wave? It is a st disturbance that propagates through space with the transference of energy, okay? So basically the particles are moving and they move through space, okay? And that's how we're able to hear, okay? Both light and sound travel in waves. You have mechanical and you have electromagnetic. Now, don't worry too much about mechanical because the big one that we're gonna see most often is electromagnetic because they do not need a medium in which to travel. They travel through a vacuum at the speed of light, okay? So basically sound needs a medium in which to travel. Uh, so uh, solid, liquid, or gas, basically. Whereas electromagnetic waves um, do not, okay? So sound waves would be mechanical. So the, the particles would hit off each other and that's how they travel. Whereas electromagnetic would be kind of like the sun, the radiation and heat, those kind of things, okay? Now, the key to that is to try and remember that all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, okay? So sometimes they won't tell you um, an electromagnetic, but that it's an, uh, it's speed because they tell you it's an electromagnetic wave. So you, you're expected to remember that speed of light is what it travels at, okay? And this is just pictures of what traveling waves are like, you know, basically the, 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 um, the disturbance travels along the wave, hits the end, it comes back, that's all, okay? So the two ways we deal with are transverse and longitudinal. So the transverse wave, okay, is an important one. They are waves in which the direction of the vibration okay, is perpendicular to the direction of the motion. In other words, as you can see here, the vibration is up and down, okay, so the vibration is up and down, but the, the wave travels left to right, okay, that's what they mean there by that, okay, all right, so the disturbance is uh, perpendicular, okay, and that's kind of what they get at, they're getting at there, all right, so longitudinal waves, all right, the direction of the vibration is parallel to the direction of the motion. In other words, okay, so we have here the wave motion is going this way. So I've been informed that my new pen is arriving today, so hopefully we can get that set up. So the wave motion goes that way, okay, so the disturbance is going left to right, but the wave is also traveling left to right, okay. Okay. So key things here, guys, on traveling waves, all right? Uh, so you have all these different things. You have the crest, you have a cycle, you have a wave. The big one that catches a lot of people is what is a wavelength? It's from one point in the wave to the corresponding point in the next wave traveling in the same direction. That's a wavelength, okay? That's lambda, okay? A cycle, okay, or an oscillation is when it goes from one point to another and back and then ready to travel in the same direction, okay? All right? Uh, amplitude is the maximum distance from uh, the maximum displacement from the um, the the oh, the mean position. English escapes me. Uh, the crest is the top of the wave, and the trough is the bottom of the wave. Okay, so they're all the kind of key things. This is all of it here. All right, frequency is in hertz. Okay, because it's the cycles per second. That's important to remember. We'll be coming back to that another time. So cycles per second. Okay. Um, frequency is the number of cycles passing per second, all right? The wavelength is the distance one point, the velocity, the amplitude, all that, just went through that. Um, and it's pretty much the same down here. The only difference is I, I included this here at the bottom of this. The disturbance produced by one complete vibration is called an oscillation or a cycle, okay? So cycles are often called oscillations, really, in physics. You rarely hear them called cycles. Most often oscillations is what they refer to. Um, these are all the SNS. Now, there are a lot of people, but it's still a nice little kind of grab. So, wavelength is a distance, it's meter. Frequency is cycles per second, so it's hertz. Velocity is the speed, meters per second. Amplitude is also a distance, meters. And the period of time is a time, so that is also seconds. Okay, so our first equation here uh, the speed is equal to velocity, or is equal to frequency times wavelength. Okay, so C equals F times lambda. All right, so the first question here then. Dolphins use ultrasonic clicks with a frequency of 55,000 hertz. Okay, so we'll write that down there. Um, F. 
okay, this pin is not working at all now. F equals 55,000 hertz. Okay, so I'm going to have to just try right with my uh, finger. It won't be as, as, as good. Fifty-five thousand hertz to navigate and find prey. The speed of the water sound in the water is one five three. Oh, everything on the left hand side. Uh, calculate the wavelength. So that's easy enough. So we know. Let's see. Equals f times lambda. So lambda equals c over f. So we put in our two values and we should get our wavelength as zero point zero two eight meters. So lambda equals. 0 0.028 and that should be lambda not a funky looking or okay so the second one suppose a dolphin sends out an ultrasonic click which is reflected back at the bottom of the ocean the dolphin hears the echo after 0 0.13 seconds how far is the dolphin from the bottom so he sends out a click hits the ground comes back up well that means okay time to hit the bottom so i'm going to rub out this stuff here because i need in my space there now. So T to hit the bottom is 0 0.13 divided by 2. 0 0.06 seconds. Because it has to go down, hit the bottom, and come back up. So therefore, we assume it's the same time down and back up. All right? So it takes 0 0.065 seconds to hit the bottom. All right, um, so therefore, uh, distance, if you remember, uh, dad's silly triangle, distance over speed by time, okay? Well, we're looking for distance here and velocity, so it's displacement over speed by time, okay? So that's SVT is what we're gonna use, okay? So therefore, we're looking for S, so S equals V times T. V is the speed of the sound of air, 1530, time is 0 0.065, so we get R, height as 99.45 meters okay there you go okay so problem two a little easier the frequency of water of a wave is 10 hertz okay so f 10 hertz how many full cycles pass per second well what does hertz hertz is cycles per second so therefore 10 hertz is 10 cycles per second so 10 cycles per second okay so how long does it take to, for one second so 10 cycles every second okay so one divided by 10 means 0 0.1 seconds is how long it takes do you understand what I just did there? So 10 cycles per second. In other words, 10 cycles equals one second. So one cycle equals one over 10, okay? I do apologize for the horrendous writing, but my, my pen is after, it's gone completely. So I'm just trying to type my finger. All right, so that's what I did there. So 10 cycles in one second. So 10 cycles equals one second. So therefore one cycle equals one second divided by 10. Problem three then, x-rays are electromagnetic waves with wavelengths between that of five by 10 to the minus nine and one by 10 to the minus 11. What is the frequency range of x-rays and take the speed of light to be that? Okay, so we wanna get the frequency range. So we'll start first with the, when lambda is five by 10 to the minus nine, okay? And C stays the same for all of them. All right, so C equals F times lambda, so F equals what? C over lambda. So when we're using this equation by five by 10 to the minus nine, we get F is equal to six by 10 to the 16. And if I use the second wavelength as one by 10 to the minus 11, I get my F value to be three by 10 to the 19. Okay, so therefore, F range equals six by 10 to the 16, all the way up three 
with it in 19 hertz. Okay? So C equals F times lambda, F equals C over lambda. So we just find it for 5 by 10 to the minus 9, 1 by 10 to the minus 11, and that's the range. It goes from 6 by 10 to the 16 to 3 by 10 to the 10, uh, 10 to the 19. And that's it. Okay? Fairly straightforward stuff. All right, so the last question here then, and then we've um, have two bits of theory to cover on wave properties. Let me see, diffraction, yeah. Yeah, and I'll hold it up there, so I'll break this up. So this will be very short, it'll be about a 10-minute video, which is fine. Um, actually, I might... Actually, you don't know, I'll, I'll just make this one video. No, no, I'll break it up. I'll break it up into two, because um, short videos are kind of easier for you to get through, and it's handier to make keep short. All right, so the time interval between the arrival of a trough of a tsunami, the tide going very far out, and the crest of a huge wave is 15 minutes, okay? If the tsunami is moving... All right, so I'm going to roll this up just because I need all this space. All right, so we have our speed here. Oops, wrong button. Our speed here is 400 kilometers per hour. Now, you've got to convert this to meters per second. How do you do that? Easy. What does oh, I always say? I'm going, to, I'm going to write it out, and I'll rub it up, but you can always go back to it. What does this mean? This means kilometers over hour. Okay, well, how do you convert kilometers to meters? And how do you convert hours to seconds? You see? So all you do, okay, for all these, if you're convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, you take your 400, you multiply it by 1,000, you divide it by 60 by 60. And that's it. That's all you do. And if you ever forget, just remember, what does kilometers per hour mean? It means kilometers divided by hour. So that should get us 111.11 one, one, one one, one meters Per second and there you go that's our speed or not v sorry that should be c okay so a time interval pretty good all right so trough the new tsunami so if you remember back what was the wavelength our wavelength was from the point to the corresponding point in the next wave now we're told here that the trough of the tsunami and the crest. So the trough being this, and in the crest being this. So we're going from a trough, trough to a crest. So of lambda from there to there. What's this distance? And it is lambda over two. It's half a wavelength. Okay, so it's half a wavelength. All right. Now, why is that important? All right. So we're told that 15 minutes is our time is for the craft. Right? So T equals 15 minutes. Okay? All right? So we want to kind of round that up. Okay? So I want to find what's the actual period T. And so therefore, that would be 30 minutes, wouldn't it? Because that is, of course, half a wavelength. So in order for half a wavelength to pass, it's 15 minutes. So therefore, for a full wavelength to pass, it would be 30 minutes. Okay? So we convert that to seconds. Seconds. Okay? Okay, so we haven't done, came across an equation here that I'm going to use just to solve this, but I'll explain what it is. Okay? All right? So, uh, in the log tables, you can find it. The period of time is equal to 1 over f, okay? And that means f is equal to 1 over t, all right? Now, the reason for that is frequency is hertz, cycles per second. So I suppose if you, you have the logic, but if you didn't know it, frequency is hertz, which is cycles per second, okay? All right? And t is the cycle, okay? The time for one cycle. So that's kind of the the way you can look at it, really, if you wish. But that's where it is. It's in the log tables, okay? Um, I just realized I should have covered that top before. It doesn't matter, okay? So you go to log tables. Period of time equals 1 over f. f equals 1 over t. So we have found t now. So we just simply know what f is. We sub in that value there. And we should get 0 0.005 continuous. Now, I left that as that because I put it straight into the calculator like that, okay? So we have now, we have our speed, 
we have our frequency, we can easily find the wavelength, okay? So C, F times lambda, lambda equals C over F. And that gives you a wavelength of 199998 meters. Okay. So what happened there? We knew what C was. We just had to convert it. We were told time is 15 minutes. So that was the time for half a wavelength or half a cycle. So therefore the time for one cycle, one oscillation is 30 minutes. Okay. Which is 1,800 seconds. Now you go to the log tables. What can we do with that? We can see the T is equal to 1 over F. And F is equal to 1 over T. Find our F value and then sub it into our above equation to find the wavelength size. And we're done. Okay. All right. So the last two things, we're going to look at the wave properties, uh, diffraction. And I'll look at constructive interference, deconstructive interference, I think. No, no, we leave it at that. So we'll do, uh, do up to uh, the fraction. Okay, so wave properties. So basically, these are kind of covered already. Um, you should really know them. Reflection is the bouncing of waves off an obstacle in their path. Okay, so basically, that's why echoes, when you, if you're in a room, there's nothing around, and you yell, you hear the echoes, because the, the wave, the sound waves are banging off the walls, and there's nothing absorbing the sound, so they fly around everywhere. Okay. Um, waves can be slowed down upon entry into different mediums, okay? And refraction is, of course, that the wave can be bent, okay, and refract, all right? Uh, simply because, as, as you can see here, um, the wave moves in, but if it hits it at an awkward angle, this part slows down quicker than this part, and this causes the wave then to refract, okay? All right, but more importantly, these are all, they're all kind of small things, guys. You can read over those notes your time yourselves. Uh, diffraction. Diffraction and diffusion are two things that people keep getting confused, so please try not to get them confused, okay? What is the fraction? The fraction is the sideways spreading of waves into a region beyond a gap or around an obstacle, okay? The sideways spreading of a wave into a region beyond a gap, okay, or around an obstacle, okay? Now, why does it occur, or when does it occur? Okay, the gap has to be approximately equal to the wavelength of the incoming wave, all right? So the gap has to be equal, okay? close to the wavelength. That's why it's very hard to diffract light. Light is a very, very small wavelength. So therefore, to try and diffract light requires the, the young slits, you know, the diffraction gradient. Okay, so it's very hard. Whereas waves have a, have a large wavelength. So therefore, you can diffract um, waves uh, easier enough, a lot easier. Okay, and that's kind of what you get here, the, the two things. So here, the wave, the gap is too big, so you don't get it. But here, with a small gap, you get your, your diffraction. Now, interference, what is interference? Interference occurs when waves from two sources meet to produce a wave of different amplitude. So two wave sources meet to produce a wave of a different amplitude, okay? So you have your constructive and your deconstructive. So constructive is if two waves meet in phase, um, crest to crest, trough to trough, okay? All right, um, you get a bigger wave. So that's why A plus B create a bigger wave. However, in this one, they meet out of phase. So A, you meet crest meeting trough, trough meeting crest, and as a result, they cancel each other out. Okay, that's kind of the idea. So constructive is two waves meet, they're in phase, and you get a, a new wave with a larger amplitude. Deconstructive is two waves meet, they're out of phase, you get a, a wave of lower amplitude. That, and that's kind of it, okay? And that's what we have here, constructive and deconstructive. You need to know all of these guys, okay? They're very easy though. Constructive, just think, construct your building, okay? Waves and two sources meet, and the amplitude of the resulting wave is greater than the individual. What's deconstructive? Think of it, deconstructive, break it down. Um, waves meet, and the resulting wave is smaller. And that's it. Okay. All right. Um, I will leave that video there. I will look at interference patterns. And moving on to the Doppler effect then with the part two. Okay. All right.